Audun. Audun. Save these breaths. They will be your last. What did you hope to gain with all this? What riches are worth so much misery and the deaths of honorable men and women? Only a feeble mind would call them honorable. They are privileged, sedentary, complacent. They wasted their resources. I secured our power committed to the future of a glorious order. On the backs of honest people, merchants, and priests, and nobles alike. A4, you are wrong. Held back by your primitive cosmology. Nine worlds in the tree? No. Nine times nine thousand worlds. And as many suns. Nine nights I hung in the tree, sacrificing myself to myself. So does the wise one seek wisdom. Countless spheres awaiting our gift, our enlightenment. I live in one world only. You live in none. I don't care! I want answers! Calm, Lord Rishia. Alden is dead. That doesn't calm me. I wanted to rip the bastard's spine out myself. You want to calm me? Start talking. Alden aligned himself to a secret group that was plotting to overtake Jorvik. Grigory the Dark Master and Ingeborg the Abyss. And you, Eivor? You were after these conspirators from the moment you arrive? Yes. Though I could not let it be known. This group can reach any person, permeate the walls of any city. Much like the worms of a spoiled apple, they would have eaten Jorvik from the inside out if we let them. But you stopped that from happening. We owe you a debt of gratitude. You can be sure Hafton Jarl will hear of this. If the threat is gone, then you have my gratitude as well. I'm alive today, and so are many others because of you. I'd like to name you an honorary High Reeve of your Vic Eivor. Would you accept? It has a nice sound to it. You honor me, Lord. You have earned it. Then if I may, a hoard of silver is left unaccounted for in the grottoes beneath these streets. That's right. Silver the Dockmaster was collecting. What do you propose we do with it? Hard-working merchants were robbed of their wares. Honor Yuletide by giving the silver back to the honest citizens of Jorvik. A wise suggestion. I agree. Fine. I will see to it that Hjord distributes the silver evenly. Come, Faravid. Help me secure this hoard. I could use a bloody walk. We have a saying in Vjarnia. Only the dead get to complain. And we're still living. I could muster a few complaints about the king and the treasury, but I shall forbear. You did it, Eivor. We did. It may be we were the recipe to keep Norway from Harold all along. He still can be. No. Norway is behind me now, and the rest of England ahead. That said, I must be going. Wait. Should you ever need us, we will come. One last thing. The soul on your desk, Hjor. It planted a seed of doubt in my mind. So I must know. What is it for? I suppose I can forgo the element of surprise. I hired a silversmith to craft a love token for Lufina. A Yuletide gift. You sneak. I will take my leave before you shame the throne. Until our paths cross again, old friend. In this world, or the next. Really? Making yourself at home? As best as I know how, it is good to be here.
with you and your people. I feel my life has found a new road. Good. And just so you know, we have all kinds of sticks nearby. Oak, beech, pine, in case your bum starts itching from sitting too long. How kind of you, Eivor. I will be sure to stir your soup with one after I have had a sound scratching. I have purged the Order of Ancients from Jorvik, the Lufina, and Hjor's aid. And should we ever need theirs, they will come. You do this work well, Eivor. Is it a prelude to you joining the Hidden Ones? I doubt it. Not enough glory in these back alley brawls. Tell me more about Kent. Basim has written, claiming to have found the woman Fulke and asking for your aid. He has taken shelter at St. Hadrian's Priory. Any news? But if he has found the paladin Fulke, Sigurd cannot be far behind. I will go as soon as I can. Good. Be safe, Eivor. Basim has news of Sigurd. I should find him soon. Dag, Basim has brought word of Sigurd's location. We're leaving at once to find him. Well done, Eivor. After so long, it finally occurs to you to search for our Jarl. I applaud your half-hearted effort, but I will not be joining you. Dag, this is no joke. On the ship, now. Someone needs to stay home and direct the affairs of the settlement. As you seem to shun this place as often as possible, it must fall to me. Sigurd's life is at stake. We need you there. No, I am needed here. Do you doubt me so completely that you will not raise an axe to save your Jarl? A fine way of putting it, Wolfkist. But go, find the Jarl, bring him back. Only do not get lost along the way, as you seem to more and more these days. This is not done, Dag. We will speak when I return. Only in the rational proof. The science of the divine. You're bold to defy your teachings. No, no, that's not what I mean. Let me, uh, let me explain, if it might. How to put it? What I mean to say is fate. For without it, Christ's sacrifice means nothing. He died to save us, did he not? From the original sin of Adam and Eve? Yet evil persists. Yes, evil persists because he gave us free will. Does a newborn babe, slain by a despot, have free will? Yes. No, I mean, that is too simplistic. Or the priest whose heart is torn from his chest by the wolf? Judas, who was predestined to betray the Nazarene? Uh, some argue Judas was used. Do my ears deceive me, Brother Hortbert? You question the scriptures? Declare Judas an innocent? A preposterous blasphemy! No, no, uh, that is not what I said. <laughs> Brother Cedric, am I not the most pious of his servants? Out! Out! Making new friends? A person's tongue gives you a taste of their heart, Eivor. And such information is often useful. And how do these sallow Christians taste? It was only a figure of speech, Eivor, and I have tired of it already. Is this how it must be between us? Of course not. I'm grateful that you have come. What happened in Mercia still puzzles me. Fulke saw something in Sigurd. A power, a legacy. What is it she wants? Her motives are difficult to fathom, but that can come later. Let's find your brother first. Agreed. If we do this, you'll earn the right to call me friend ten thousandfold. So... What is your plan? We are deep in their god's heartland. A heathen and a heretic. To hunt Fulke, we'll need a Christian snare. Fulke is hardly a saint herself. These Christians abhor her strange ideas. True. But unlike us, she can carry herself as one of them. She won't hide from everyone. Not with a prisoner in tow. So, where to begin? I've made a friend. Abbot Cunibert. Full of pious fire but with ambition that far outweighs his wit. And what does your friend Kinnebert know? Come, I will introduce you, and we'll hear the full tale together.
Have you found some peace in your time alone, Basil? I am always at peace, and never alone. I move among the people of the world with great joy. I watch them, study them, learn from them at all times. This is our duty. The Hidden One's calling. You know, for the first time since we've met, you sound more like you're a princess than yourself. Right. And our sense of, how should I say, deep responsibility to the betterment of mankind. That's quite an ambition. But it doesn't explain what you see in Sigurd. My brother is not so generous. Ah, but your brother is someone special, important. And I want him to see that. I hope to show it to him. Is this not a blessed plot? God's own country. And this Eden should be given to his servants to tend. Abbot Cunibert, this is the Norse I spoke of. Ah, yes. And quite a fearsome one at that. Basim says you know the paladin Fulke. Indeed. The Lady Fulke passed this way not more than a month ago. We talked, we drank. Very pleasant woman. And where is she? Eivor will be your axe, Abbot. Whether to fell a tree, or hew the limbs from an enemy. What have you promised him? Oh, just a trifle, Eivor. A little problem I believe you can help me with. Speak your terms plainly, Abbot. I will decide if the bargain is worth my time. Ah! Your wolf shows its teeth, Basim. Let's cut to the point. What favor would you ask in exchange for Fulke? Some weeks ago, our elderman in Kent was called to God. A terrible loss. King Alfred has chosen his replacement, but has not yet announced the name. I must know it. Now. All of Kent will see soon enough which thane he has chosen. Why not wait? I want early access. To woo him before his exalted position is made public and every fool is at his door. Who else knows the chosen man? Sent with a letter of congratulations to the new Elderman. Intercept him and bring me the news. When I know the Thane's name, we'll discuss how I might win his favor. Your king will not be happy, his church meddling in his politics. Does this not delight you, Eivor? A chance to defy Alfred? I am God's humble ship. Sent to protect his lambs. If Kent's new elderman is a wolf, I would blunt his claws. This emissary, how will I find him? Tunbridge Monastery sent word that the King's men always pass a few nights in their hospitality. Begin there. I'll get the elderman's name. You find Fulke. All in good time. Now, if we're done, I have business up the south coast. Falkenstern has the best fish in Wessex. Then I will find you there, when the Elderman's name is mine. Cunibert is ambitious, but well-connected. We will not find Fulke without him. I suppose we'll see. What will you do? I'm not done playing with these Christians yet. I will see you in Falkenstern. Alfred's emissary spent a few days here. Someone may know where he went. You tried to catch flies, or would you ask something of me? I'm looking for a man. He passed through here on the King's business. No, oh, bugger off here, or I'll call the guards. I'm sick of people. You need to heal your own ills. How about you help me from the goodness of your heart, and then I'll leave you alone? A wise move, Mudwit. It so happens I did see Alfred's man. He's long gone, though. Maybe Gowan the Bard knows where. Where will I find him? Well, he was pissed as a newt. Last I saw, he was passed out in trees between the arbor and bridge. Oh, now go find someone else to vex. There was a bard drinking with the emissary. I should find him. See if he knows anything. What do you see, Zunim? No, 
That ale swamp skull can't have gone far. Stole my troops. Fa la la la, Fanny, Fanny, Parody. Where are you going, my sweet lady? You there, you're alive. <laughs> Patience is a tired horse. Plodity plod plod. <laughs> Another tottering teat sucker who can't hold his drink. Let's clear your head. Wakes me. The tail weaver. Gowan the dandelion. For the seeds of my stories flit upon the winds of Wessex. But why, Mule, do you kick my noggin? You and Alfred's emissary were drinking in the tavern. Tell me where he went. Were we? I was so ale addled. Perhaps a small and silver thing upon my palm might help me. How about something long and sharp in your gut? Right, no need for that. You paint a vivid picture, Dane. He was headed to the white coast to the southeast, Dover Fortress. He said it is where they train those religious fanatics, zealots. They pray all night instead of sleeping. My thanks, and in return, wisdom. Too much beer bibing will grow a fool in wit and words. My thanks, Weaver of the Obvious. Now leave me to my unholy punishment. The emissary is somewhere here. Perhaps I can find the letter without bloodshed. The bots... They will attack on sight here. Mm -hmm. If I could steal the letter without killing the emissary, it would keep me out of trouble. Show me. The Abbot Cunebert will want to know. The challenger. You must. My it Abbey brings the best intent. It certainly sounds worth the risk of my immortal soul. Ah, but your god is rather a hard taskmaster. And your god forbids the mixing of wool and linen. It sounds to me like he's never heard of England. 
<laughs> How about Not a round all of that dice? is written in the scriptures is God's honest truth. Ivor, you have news? Kent's new elderman will be Thane Tedmund. Tedmund? Oh, the Lord is testing me. He is made mouse by you Danes. Barely leaves his fortress at Rusister. How might I gain his influence if he will not speak to me? Or to anyone? It is a puzzle. To inspire loyalty, Tetman must owe you something. Such as his life. Go on. A fortress stormed. A man kidnapped. If you beat back his enemy, saved him from sure death, his gratitude would... Swell. It would know no bounds. But that fortress will be harder to pry open than a nun's knees. Perhaps... Perhaps not. Are you hiding something, Bathen? There is a lumber mill nearby, correct? Bemisfield. Alfred invests much in fortifying Wessex, and uses our forests to do so. The mill provides his wood. Tedmund is there. Impossible! How do you know? I heard rumors that Tedmund had been lured out of self-exile to manage work on the fortifications of Canterbury. Taking him from a lumberyard is less dangerous than assaulting a fortress. But your rescue attempt will not have the same flair. Is it worth it? It may still work. Yes. Yes. Bring him to the Megaliths. And Fulke? When I have Tedman's fealty, you shall have Fulke. Now go. I will rustle up a small rescue party. I do a roaring trade at Reculver and Tunbridge. They pay well for my catch. The monks? Do those parchment skinned Christians ever eat meat? Don't you believe in Jesus? The assault of a Fulke. The abbot is a friend of Fulke's. That is clear. So long as he doesn't suspect our motive, we may have a chance. Indeed. This brings to mind a story. Perhaps you've heard of it. The Scorpion and the Frog. A children's story? A cautionary tale. The Scorpion wants to cross the river, but he cannot swim. So he enlists the help of the Frog. The Frog agrees to carry him on his back, extracting a promise that the Scorpion will not sting him. Let me guess. The Scorpion reneges... Blaming his nature, and both drown. But the scorpion crosses the river and stings an innocent man, killing him. So what does this tale tell us? That your stories are clouded and their meaning doubly so? It shows that every tale has a thousand possible outcomes, many of which are surprising. If the abbot does not deliver Fulke, he will die at my hand. And we will continue our search. A sobering approach. to follow. I hope this chase will catch us a plump hen. Once the abbot has Tedman's gratitude, he will deliver Fulke. It will cost us nothing more than this. If that leaden wit keeps his word. Bemisfield is just ahead. Lead. I will follow. I think so too. One more time, I tell you. If he says my boots are dirty or my hair needs combing, I will split him up. You're full of swap gas. You'll do what you always do bow and straight to our good. <laughs> No, absolutely. 
I need your eyes, my friend. Stop caterwauling and you'll live. Live? Oh, saints protect me! Silence will save you, Tetman. Silence, not your saints. <laughs> hey. Flee, my friend. We have to have a case. Does this venture not set your blood ablaze? You don't prefer working in the shadows. Mm. And so we have. To steal a man, take him with swiftness, and escape without anyone on our heels, we hide in plain sight. Such is our way, but only until the moment of success, the final strike. I prefer to act and speak plain. Kings and lords who do not are often misunderstood. Yet as a leader yourself, you cannot deny that subtlety and intrigue are a cloak you must wear. How many of your clan know the true circumstances of Sigurd's absence? Hmm. You see my point. A leader must know when to speak and when to stay silent. For silence is not always a lie. It can feel like one. You truly embrace the concept of hiding in plain sight, eh? To its very fullest. As I do in everything. Halt, Danes! In the name of Alfred, King of Wessex, I demand you release his royal subject <gasps> into my care. Come no closer, Christian! Else your man dies by my blade. Please, I, I'm not the man you want. Keep your eye on this one. He'll be worth a hefty bounty. Any false moves and I will snip your heels. We have your man. Now let's finish this shadow play and be gone. Are you sure that's Tedmund? He's dressed as a lord, but that man is shorter and fatter than I recall. I'm not Tedmund. I, 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 I'm not. I, I swear upon the holy rood. I, I am not Thane Tedmund. What in heaven's name is happening here? Who are you? Speak quickly, or I will slit your throat and leave you for the crows. Shergar. I, I'm called Shergar. Lord Tedmund pays me a measly coin to serve as his double. Brother Shergar? You are far from Augustine's priory. Uh... I left the cloisters many moons ago, Your Holiness. The monastic life was not my calling. We can use you yet, Shirga. Summon Tetman to a meeting. Get him out in the open. Tetman has no care for me or what I have to say. My orders come by letter, never by mouth. I hardly know the man. You have no use to us, then. Perhaps I should just kill you here and now. No, no, wait, 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 wait. Let, let, let me think. Let me think. You need Danes. There's a raiding camp west of here I was told to be wary of. I, acting as Tetmund, I ordered a band of soldiers to capture them. 
If you hurry, you may be able to stop this. If another band of Danes wants to join our assault, we'll have the distraction we need to get inside Rusester. If the Saxons don't slaughter them first... I, I am still Tedman to the men in the field. I could speak with their captain, send his men away. It's a fearless plan. The Nornia knit winding path that cannot be unknotted. It seems Rusester was always in our path. Abbot, stay alert. We'll send word when we're ready to capture Tedmund. And this fool? He knows much of our plan. Do what you want with him. I won't risk our plan on the shambling of this fool. Come, Brother Shergar. And perhaps today would be the time to consider a vow of silence? An army of Danes is all we need to take the fortress. Let us hope. It is best to snare a wasp with honey. Have you ever considered more subtlety? I leave manipulation to you, Basim. You appear to see it as an art. It is both art and science to bend a man to your will. And harder still, to convince them that they are firmly in control. Shergar was quick to betray his lord. Do you not think he would sell us out as swiftly? Perhaps. Perhaps not. I do not presume to know a man's heart in so brief a meeting. His prattle was sad and ugly, like a weeping babe. You have little patience for chittering squirrels, but he's in me. We are nearing the camp. Let us hope there are Danes enough to storm a fortress. Otherwise, this abbot's game is a long one. It must be played, if we are to reclaim Sigurd. Those who remain must be saved, whatever the cost. done right by me. We owe you our lives, friend. These Saxon whoresons would have killed us all. Yes, they would have. And now's your chance to hit back. March with us on Rusester and drain it of riches. I would gladly, friend. But we few will not break those iron-thick walls. Hold upon to attack their countrymen. Mercy, I will heed the call. Giedrich will provide our Viking a horde. We'll send a message to Oxenfordshire. The men of Mercia would gladly take a swipe at Wessex. What is your name, warrior? Runa Egelstotter. We need ships, Runa. We have a small fleet moored up river, but a naval chain blocks passage to Rue Sister's walls. I will remove it, and your people will bring their ships. Now, gather these fallen weapons and armor. Giedrich and the men of Oxenifordshire will need them to hide their Mercian origins. My warriors were denied Valhalla today. I cannot bear the idea of gifting their weapons to more Saxons. Their sacrifice was great. Their gift will be all the greater. They will know justice with our victory. It will calm their restless shades, I promise. Will your men bring the armor to the battle? And what is our plan? In the morning, you will go to Buckingham, remind Giedrich of his promise. When you have his bond, meet me on the shore near Rusesta with the ships. Ah, but Cunibert must be warned in advance. He'll need time to muster his rescue party. Runa, that is your task. I will tell you where to meet him before you leave. All seems in order. At first new light, I will leave. Good. That gives us time to drink. You've traveled so far to carry out your duty. Is this the hidden one? Always on the move? No. Mine is not the usual path. The creed does travel. Our ideals are universal. We believe that. So there's nowhere you call home? No place I call home. No. Weird. For me, home is family. 
but I have no family. No one? Not even Hytham? Parents, brothers, all dead. I lost my parents when I was nine winters alone. Without Sigurd, I would have... I would have... There is always one unbreakable bond. Yes. Children. <laughs> they bewilder you. They can cause you so much worry. Fill you with joy. Even stop your heart. And if you're lucky, they replace you. I had a son. I miss him terribly. Even now. He was taken from me. By someone I trusted. A friend. A mentor. A man who I would trust with anything. with anything can take everything he took all I had all I had to clear this fort and break this chain to get our ships safely upriver. The mechanism should be inside. With the chain down, Gidrich and the ships can get through. Eivor, we await your orders. You brought your weapons and armor. Aye, Raven Tamer. Good. Now we dig in and wait for our friends. Axe in the sod of Wessex. You thought of me. Such an honor. Is everything else in place, Eivor? Are we ready to take Rusester? Rally our army. We will drag this mouse from his hole.
put them out. Stronger already. <laughs> Tatman is holed up in the tower keep. Press forward. Take this fortress! Rue sister will not fall to you, rabid pack of mongrels! to take this fortress, Dane. Alfred's army will smear your innards across the battlements. We're not here for stone and sand, Bane Tedmund. I shit on you! 
You and your toy gods. I will not bow to you like some puppet's lord. I would rather die. How much will your king pay us to keep your sniveling head upon your neck? An army marches upon us from the south. A holy man from St. Hadrian's Priory, backed by a field. Ah, then, Abbot. Kinnebert? God be praised. If riches are all you care about, the church has it in abundance. If the terms are fair, you'll have your freedom. A chest or two of silver for a shit-stained sewer rat. Or I'll not be able to stop my friend from slitting your throat. Ah! Watch yourself, heathen. You handle me too roughly. You will die for the indignities you've showered upon me, Daniel. I mean no offense, Thane. You're only a hefty ransom to me, nothing more. This is why you batter down my gates, kill my men for a purse of the grubby coin? You have no honor. In a Oh. <clears throat> you there, heathens, let this good man go, or suffer an iron sickness. And what do you offer us in return? Your lives? We lost many good men storming this keep. It will not be in vain, Christ's slave. Twenty chests of silver. Give them all they ask, Kinnebert. A hefty sum. That will leave God's coffers hollow? I cannot give it up without some assurance. Tedmund, you extort me in return for my life? You were swiftly met, Abbot. Not long after these... these scallious worms took my fort. On the Lord's bidding, Tedmund, at prayer, a terrible vision befell me. A host of heathens, your life in danger. A coincidence I find rather... <coughs> Rather ominous, Abbot. Do you... <coughs> God help you, man. Are you well? Uh, I need... I need air. He's dead. The work of poison, no doubt. No, 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 no. Rouse the dead. He must not be dead. Poison? How does the man die of poison in our arms? Many great kings and paranoids have carried poison in times of war as an alternative to capture and ransom. A catastrophe. Alfred will choose another and... By the saints! Alfred! How will I explain this to the king? We followed this road to its end, Cunebert. You may not like where it led, but you owe us our half of the bargain. You shall have your paladin. I need a day. Return to my abbey tomorrow, and you shall... Oh, dear, oh dear. These delays are grinding at my bones. We should abandon Cunebert. Find full care ourselves. Peace, Eivor. Speak with Giedrich and relieve him of his oath. I'll meet you at Cunebert's abbey. You fought like beasts, escaped from your hell today, Giedrich. Your oath to me is fulfilled. It was good to stand shoulder to shoulder with you against the pox dogs of Wessex. May our friendship endure. This tangle briar of Christians and lords means nothing to me. I'm here for Sigurd. I understand. When you find him again, come see me. We'll feast and sing, with mead and friendship to warm us. Agreed.